Hi everyone, welcome back to episode four of our podcast where we're going to be discussing interview tips and assessment centres. I'm Darren Broad, Future Training Sister at Clyde & Co and I'm joined by the fantastic Chloe Allage. Hi everybody, um, yeah nice to be back um, and I'm also a future trainee um, at Mitchell Moores and we're also joined again by Amanda Crutchley Hi. today. We're now at that stage where fingers crossed you've managed to secure yourself an interview or a video interview with a law firm. So I thought I'd just sort of touch off um, on what, what the difference is, because because some law firms will still have a an interview where you log on with a call or you're in person and you have that. But a lot of firms now use a sort of intermediate stage where you have a pre-recorded interview. So you'll log on to their system and there'll be set questions that you have to answer and then that goes off as sort of a, a filtering stage. Yeah mm. and I think a lot of students we found have found that very difficult mm. because it's, it's an unknown to them and it's very hard you don't get the energy yeah. that yeah. you do in a, in a physical interview and mm. so that, that there's no gauging of how well you've done with that. Um, mm. So yeah I think that that has taken people out of their comfort zone but you know as you know we, we do mock yeah what we do interviews yeah. um to give the students practice but yeah i think it's a, you're right it's absolutely a change that's come in in the mm. past couple of years yeah i know darren and i both had um, experiences with these and um they sort of use them as like a preliminary before you get onto an assessment center or an in-person interview with an actual member of the grad rec sometimes i know me and darren found that um and they can be done in different formats so sometimes um the, the question will pop up and you'll have a few um, seconds to kind of prepare, write your notes, and you can also kind of retake it and refilm it if you mess up. But sometimes it's a one shot thing. Mm. So definitely read the instructions yeah. before and be prepared for that. And, you know, with preparing for that, like Amanda said, reach out to your career service at ULaw. Um, the careers team will do mock interviews with you because yeah. it is quite a foreign thing, isn't it? Yeah. You, yeah. you know, you don't know it. And I'm sure at other universities, they do a similar thing. And there's just tips. I mean, we, we had one student feedback to us that he'd done post it notes all over yeah. his computer yeah. um so when he was looking at the video because it's yeah, yeah, yeah. all, yeah. yeah. all these post-it notes yeah. started sliding off oh, no. um, during it so yeah i think um practice little little tips on how to yeah. succeed and actually like Chloe just said you know practicing it mm. as well really helps yeah and i think the theme throughout all our episodes is um sort of don't worry if you're not getting it right yeah. first time or yeah. if you're getting I, my first video interview went terribly and I ended up I think I ended up crying after it mm. <laughs> and I'm sort of giving my mum a hug um <laughs> but you know I'm, I'm sat here now thankfully with a with a training contract so don't worry if if you do one and it's it all doesn't it's all yeah it doesn't quite go as you expect yeah. it's absolutely fine yeah. um so I think another stage firms use which I did mention I wanted to cover off today is something called psychometric testing um, which is a really sort of sounds like a horrible phrase and it sounds like you're going to be put in some sort of lab um, but it's not and it's it's again another sort of filtering stage that some firms use and some firms don't so that's something you can pull out on your law firm research if it's something you really want to avoid or perhaps you know you haven't succeeded at in the past but the most common one is known as the Watson Glazer test did you have any experience with this Chloe? Yes so um, I did have to compete the Watson Glazer test um, and I also did other types of psychometric testing. So some firms use more of like, it's like you're playing games. I know you had this with one of your firms, yeah. didn't you? Um, so some use the traditional Watson Glazer test, which I'm sure um, Amanda can go into a bit more detail about what it is and how to sort of some tips. But other firms use games and it's really testing your cognitive ability and the way that you think. So there's no real way to prepare for these because it's a testing your like innate abilities yes. and how it sort of works. But yeah, we, we do have um, we do have a, a resource bank for these. And I'd, I'd say to students actually to undertake the resource bank and, and practice mm -hmm. it, because whilst, like you said, it's not preparation for what the right answer will be, it actually you understand the context of what mm -hmm. type of questions mm -hmm. you're going to be asked, what's the format for these psychometric tests, and that will that will assist, I think, um, doing better at them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and many of them do test innate ability, a lot of them, yeah. or, or skills that you already have. So if if perhaps you're not succeeding or you're struggling, don't worry because um, a lot of firms, I mean, I'm with Clive and Co, and they they don't have one. Do, do Mitchell Moore's have one? Yeah, and one thing I was to mention as well is. Um, it depends when you do them. So sometimes you'll do them before. Mm. So we're talking about in a timeline, this whole series is about a timeline. So sometimes you'll have a video interview and a psychometric testing before you get to assessment centre. Yeah. But with Mitchell Moores, which is where I'm a future trainee, um, we actually did the psychometric testing whilst on the vacation scheme. Right, okay. So that's the way that it was worked there. So you might find that, okay, I haven't done it and I've got to an assessment centre. 
but you might have to do it later down mm. the line. So don't rule it out and definitely research as to where your firm puts it in the recruitment process. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Mm. And then I think we've discussed quite nicely in our video interviews and psychometric testing. So they're often sort of the next stage after you've applied. Some firms will use both or one or none. But generally, I think assessment centres aren't really going away. I think the majority of firms are here to stay. And these can sort of be a full day, half day, possibly even longer of various different tasks and and trials. So they generally involve sort of a group task, um, an interview. I had a sort of discussion exercise and it it really differs Mm -hmm. firm to firm, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think students can be quite scared by them because you hear like, OK, you're going to an assessment centre and you're filled with the joy that, you know, you've made it to the next stage. But then it's like this is your first interaction properly mm. with the firm face to face. And it's kind of how do you manage that? Yeah. Do you find the students? Yeah, like that? absolutely. And it, it does. I think they do feel a bit like it's the Hunger Games that they're being thrown in <laughs> yeah. with lots of others who are at that, you know, that pass the mm. test and it, it you know it feels very real at that stage but just you know think about it I always say to students you know think about it what what are the law firm looking for why why will they bring you into mm. the law firm because they want to see the kind of person you are they want to see those soft skills mm. that go beyond the academics so you know very simple competencies you know d- when they do some assessment center tests they, they appreciate that there there will be extroverts in the group there'll be people mm. who are more introvert but do those with stronger personalities incorporate and collaborate effectively with those that maybe are quieter? Mm. How how do you work in a team dynamic? You know, are you proactive? Do you have qualities? How do you fit with the team? And I think one of the things I just kind of say with the assessment centres is you you are on show from the minute you walk through yeah. that door. Mm. So how you greet the receptionist on the morning, how you are with um, other staff around the premises, you know, from the cleaners to... Um, the partners to the to the caterers yeah um, you know ha- are you the type of person that they are looking forward to work mm. at that firm because they're ambassadors for the firm mm. yeah and so that they're the kind of skills they're looking for so in in a way an assessment center is nothing to be scared yeah. of mm. really yes they will be set tasks to do but it mm. is those general skills that, yeah. that firms I think are looking for and looking to see and do you fit and a lot of students, you know, we do say to them, you will maybe find out on assessment centres that that firm is not for you mm. rather and then it be a, you know, are you selected or not selected? Yeah. Some students walk in and say, actually, I, I just didn't feel that firm mm. was right for me, a good fit. So they're valuable in that respect as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we mentioned before about it being very much a two way street with you know, it being a good fit for you and you being Absolutely. a good fit for them. Yeah. And um, also just sort of pulling on what we said in the last episode, it's it's about just being your own cheerleader, selling yourself and yeah. having that confidence because you're there for a reason. I know me and Darren discussed we, the imposter syndrome is bound to kick mm. in. You're thinking, you know, you're in a room, everyone's going for the same job, but you're there for a reason. So, you know, mm. really try yeah. to remember that. To be in that position, they've liked what they've seen. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, obviously they think you've got the qualities that they're looking for on paper. And now it's just seeing those qualities so yes absolutely you know don't don't hide back be mm. yourself don't worry about it be yourself um but yes you you can't you can't kind of shy away mm. Mm. yeah and I think Amanda touched on sort of in-person um, assessment centers obviously ours were virtual yes and a lot of them are still being yes. held but the same points absolutely apply about you know dressing well presenting yourself yeah. well yeah. um you know, I remember in my group task, there was one sort of candidate who was sort of, you could see him sort of slouched down in his seat, not really engaging. And I just I want to say, please, you know, please sit up and just, yeah. just look engaged, even if you're not, yeah. even if you are a little Absolutely. bit bored. Absolutely, you know, cameras fully on for the yeah. word, you know, dress. I think you say, you know, get get your surroundings yeah. mm, um, good, have your drinks at hand, yeah. dress smartly as if you were mm. going into actually into the law firm as well. You know, Mm. think about what's in your background. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know whether, Darren, you wanted to touch on, um, we could talk now about sorts of exercise you might get at an assessment centre. So I know we've mentioned group tasks, but, you know, all assessment centres are different. So we could talk about maybe our experiences and then some other common ones with Amanda. Yeah, I can go through. So my one um, started off with a lovely hour interview, which is a lovely way to kick (laughs) off at half past nine in the morning. which again was with an associate and a member of HR. But I think the thing I want to emphasize about that was they weren't, that they're not looking to trip you up or to find fault. Um, if anything, it might be a unique experience to Clyde's, but I'm sure all firms, they're, they're looking to, for you to succeed. Yes. Um, 
And I remember what one question was like a scenario based question. So you come in the office and you're given this task and someone's asking you to go to court. You know, how, how do you handle it? And I got a little bit flustered. Um, and rather than just sort of staring blankly at me, the interviewer was really kind and they rephrased the question and they said, you know, do you want to have a think about that again to see if, you know, they knew I had the answer in me. So they were giving me a, a second chance. So I think with interviews, you, you will be nervous, but they're not looking to trip you up. Um, and if you need to take a sip of water or ask them to repeat absolutely. the question, um, it's absolutely fine. It's just two human beings behind the screen who have been in your place yeah. um, and who, who are going to sit interviews for future jobs and promotions. Um, who were you so interviewers? Did you have, were they kind of partner level? Yeah, we, so we had one, one associate and one member of HR, yeah. which is really nice to have that, that sort of balance. Mm. Um, and then when it did come to the final TC interview, it was two partners. Yeah. But we can touch on that a bit later, yeah. which is a bit scary, but still fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always found that they had like a, a an associate or a partner or a solicitor to ask maybe the legal questions. But then there was always a member of uh, graduate recruitment or HR mm -hmm. to ask the more competency based questions and, you know, picking up on your skills and your soft That's skills true. and things. And it's nice to have that balance yeah. as well. Um, Mm. So, yeah, you started with an interview. Yeah, and then yeah. we went on to, I think we had the group exercise, which was on a non-legal scenario, which I think they always are, because if you are coming from non-law background, it's not fair to give you no. a very no. legal-based scenario. So I can't, it was on something random like solar panels in Nigeria or something. I can't quite remember now. Um, but it, it, they're not testing your knowledge about the scenario. They're testing how, how you interact and your skills. So we were given an hour to make some presentation on some I can't remember what it was now but we had to present <laughs> yeah, back that's a common thing. and mm -hmm. you know work as a team and decide on the best route and the best outcome and just justify it that, that, that's what they're looking for they're looking for your justification they're, they're not really bothered why but you know why did you come to that outcome how did you get there as a group how mm -hmm. did you work together and they're they're the skills they're testing so that's kind of how how the group tasks work for me and how how they genuinely work yeah. I then had a little break I think and then we went on to a written exercise so again we were given a scenario and asked to come up with I think it was an A4 plan of the best outcome of whether we should use wind or solar power or something like that but what they were looking for again was your reasoning why and they gave you sort of business facts so pulling in the numbers a little bit yeah. and you had to then present that to essentially the client who mm. was two sort of interviewers so once we did that written exercise the last bit was a 25 minute discussion exercise which was then as if you're sat in front of the client you're justifying why you've come to that outcome yes. um, from the written exercise and that one is a little bit a little bit scary because they do sort of question you and they they sort of put you in the alternative well don't you think this would be better and all they're looking for there is just for you to just sort of stand your ground a little bit obviously don't be rude <laughs> but you're just saying you know, thank you so much for that. I, I really appreciate the, that that's definitely an option. But from my from my research, I think this would be the best option for your company, Absolutely. et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how my discussion exercise went. I don't think not all firms have that format, but that's what my assessment centre looked like. So four tasks. It was pretty much the whole day. And then they had a nice sort of networking um, panel afterwards with trainees, which wasn't assessed. They just said this is just a chance for you to chat, mm -hmm. which was a really nice way to end day yeah but that's how mine worked and hopefully yeah. that's helped but Chloe can sort of yeah it was very similar well. I did a couple of assessment centers and again we had that sort of group task I think the thing to note with that is you'll get put into a group with people and there will always be someone watching you and how you interact with your mm. smaller group so it's not just when you feed back and do your presentation that yeah. they're watching they're watching how you interact when you're doing your planning as well yeah. so it's about you know making sure everyone's heard so if there's someone who is more introverted you know, trying to make sure that their ideas are heard as well mm. um, without being too pushy. Because obviously you want to get your points across, but you don't want to be pushing everyone else out of the conversation as no. well. So that's really important. Um, again, we had a written exercise, which was very similar to Darren's. I think we had to write a report summarised out of a lot of documents we got given. Um, and we had something, an article discussion. So this was kind of pulling from our commercial awareness, which I know we touched in our last episode. So go um, check that out if you haven't yet. Um, but we had an article, I think it was about legal tech, something that was big in commercial awareness at the time. We had to read it and then discuss with a partner about um, kind of what the article has said, but then also going on on the general theme of legal tech and how that impacts the firm, their clients and the economic sphere as a whole, really. So that kind of pulled in on our commercial awareness, which we've said is a buzzword. 
And um, we've given you some sort of resources that early, we? yeah, to sort of go and start building that. So I think it's important to have that before you go to assessment centres as well. Um, but yeah, is there anything that you find that students sort of struggle with or any other sort of exercises you've experienced? Amanda? I think Darren touched on it, I think, um, earlier on that they don't always go what you think is mm. a yeah. perfect scenario. Yeah. You, you cannot prepare fully for an assessment day. No. Um, I think what you're, you're doing here is great to highlight to the students what they're looking for mm. underneath it. And I think students need to be confident when they when they go in and find out they will have whatever happens a, a, a curveball situation 100%, 100%. thrown yeah. at them. Yeah. We've had, we've had uh, remember one student came back very upset because um, she'd gone for a, a training class contract in um, assessment centre and they've given them an, a, a town plan with Playmobil, mm. all the Playmobil <laughs> on the on the table and said, yeah. do your perfect urban planning. She just said, I, I, I didn't understand urban planning. I didn't know if the, the bus station should be yeah. next to it. And, you know, it wasn't like you've said, it wasn't that that they were after at all. Yeah. But I think she was so overwhelmed by the, yeah. the task that she forgot actually what they were seeking and mm. you're right in both you what you said in relation to it's mm. it's how you interact with people mm. like you said chloe it's how you, you you know you can't be be quiet and shy you have to contribute mm. you have to force yourself if that's not your in the yeah. group if you tend to be the the quieter one you know really do try and push yourself to mm. to, to hold your own in that group um but effectively they'll also be they'll be looking to see that others include you and you know these students will have great ideas but yeah I think generally it's, it's interesting hearing both of yeah. your training contract assessment centres mm. as well because they do marry with pretty much mirror what in essence when it comes down to the bare bones mm. generally how they, they run. Yeah. yeah but I think like you've touched on um, the, the law funds are assessing you on all the tasks so I you know my, my interview I didn't think it went particularly well yes but I sort of had to once that interview ended Absolutely. I had to go right that's done now yeah, yeah. we need to move on and focus yes. on the next task because I couldn't let it absolutely affect my yeah. performance and on they, other tasks you may have done so much better than actually you feel as mm. well yeah which is often the case yeah yeah, mm. yeah. so it's it, they're assessing you on all aspects yeah so um, there, there'll always be one task you will perform yeah. not as well on as others. Yeah. And, 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 and how you cope in nature. stressful situations. Yeah, yeah. We've had stories about one law firm, they asked them to do a presentation and, and they said, sorry, the, the equipment isn't working. You now have to present without the PowerPoint mm. to do that. And they were looking looking to see how they responded mm. in that stress. Because what they're looking is, you know, how will you be in a law firm? So your example, Darren, about um, questioning your yeah. reasoning. As, as a lawyer, you have to give advice to a client Mm. And you have to reason and be persuasive and, and, and you know, give some reasoning about why you're giving that mm. advice and not necessarily sway mm. from the advice you're giving if pushed. And clients will mm. say, well, I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Mm. But you have to stand by your advice that you're yeah. giving to the client. Mm. And why? So they want to see, you know, can you command your decision, um, you know, that you will have, listen to what mm. maybe the client's instructions mm. are and absorb them, but very much, you know, can you can you stand by your reasoning, your advice, your instructions? So they're, mm. they're looking to see, you know, what will you be able to to offer those legal skills that you'll need mm. in in due course? Can you can you demonstrate them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's just important to note that we've spoken about. Um, kind of the types of tasks you might get but there's no magic formula as to what you're no, going to get no, when you go along not at all. so you, you're listening to us and we're telling you about what, what we've got as experience but we can't tell you what's going to happen no. so I think the best ways to prepare are to do your research you know get up to scratch your commercial awareness and just mm. kind of have that confidence absolutely isn't it? and then um, we do you yeah, students may be aware you might be aware we have interview feedback forms mm. from different law firms which yeah. use and so whenever a student goes out for an interview Mm -hmm. um, or an assessment centre, we asked to give feedback. So um, all students can access them, but also if they, for example, um, book a mock interview with their careers manager, the careers manager will ask where have you have applied to, mm -hmm. will use the interview feedback yeah. and assessment feedback forms to tailor mm -hmm. um, that mock interview for them as well. So that is really helpful because mm -hmm. sometimes it's surprising how little law firms actually change their style yeah. of interviewing yeah, yeah. and what they ask. Yeah, so don't so. don't forget that resource is there as well. And obviously, even if you're a 
for example, a Bristol student, you can access the London, Birmingham yeah. um, campus feedback forms as well. So wherever you're looking for in the country, it's, it's beneficial. Yeah, I mean, because I was a student at Bristol, but I got the feedback form for Clyde Co., which yeah. is obviously London. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I had that prior to my, yeah. you know, the day before my assessment centre. Did it very much? Um, not a huge amount. No. <laughs> and then I obviously filled it out after mine. Yes. So there's a, you know, yeah. there's a yeah. huge bank, bank of, of resources. Of date knowledge. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Law firms generally don't sway they don't, they too don't much. Sway too much. Um, they yeah. might change sort of. Yeah. We'll would. do a video interview this year. Absolutely. We might not, but yeah. Yeah, they do keep the it the style, same. The style, though, the style that the yeah, firm firms likes. have a style mm. which work for them. To do. So, yeah. yeah, don't forget to use those resources. Yeah. And yeah. I think the other point I wanted to sort of, I guess, wrap up on, we're coming to sort of the end of our points, is just that after an assessment centre, firms will often give feedback. It's, it's not Absolutely. guaranteed, but by the time you've got to this stage, you have sort of, yeah. you're, you're a bit further mm. along as a candidate. Um, and I remember after my Clyde Co one, I, I emailed in and asked for feedback. And, you know, fortunately, I did get the vacation scene. But if I didn't, um, that, that was really, really useful to understand yeah. where my strengths and weaknesses were. I mean, even though I did, I still use that feedback yeah. on my vacation scheme. Yeah. Um, but just bear that in mind at this point, you're in that position to sort yeah. of ask for a little bit of feedback. And, and, and a point that every student should be doing post interview, post assessment mm. is reflection. Yeah. Mm. Take some time to reflect. You know, put aside that oh gosh that was awful yeah. feeling that everyone mm. has when they come out of something mm. um and and you know reflect what went well what would i maybe change next time mm. what skills do i need to improve did they ask me something that i actually felt i probably need more mm. experience in or mm. some strength and link in with you with your employability department to mm. talk to them about that mm. yeah absolutely yeah, I think it goes without saying just reaching out to your careers um, team as well, yeah. employability team, yeah. prior to the assessment centre, afterwards, whenever you need the help, they're there. Aren't yeah, they? we're here to so, support. Yeah. Fabulous. I think that brings us nicely to the end. Yeah. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.